I'm Maggie Litz, and I am the estate historian here at the Wintour Museum, Garden, and Library. When, when people think of Downton Abbey, they think of the British country house, and so many people think they know that. It's popular all over the world. It's because of the novels, it's because of the movies, everybody's read Agatha Christie, there's Gosford Park. But what is the American estate? Uh, what, is, what does that mean? And so this is, was really an opportunity for us to talk about that. Um, but there's something fishy going on, of course, because we are comparing a fictional British country estate, Downton Abbey, with a real American place, uh, the DuPont place at, at Wintertour. And so we start off our exhibition with a quote from Oscar Wilde, one of my favorite authors. I love acting. It's so much more real than life. So fiction condenses, it makes things more real, it makes things more dramatic. And, and we love Downton Abbey here at Wintertour because it's really made so many people interested in history. What we've been looking at are the different audiences for Downton Abbey and how much people are engaged in understanding what's real, what's not real with that. And so we try to answer some of that in the exhibition. We had different choices with the exhibition, how to organize it. We had all these wonderful costumes. We decided to, what to do is organize it chronologically. So we go through the times of the day. We start off in the morning with the servants who are working long before the family wakes up. We start off with the, with the people ironing their newspapers. What's that about? We have a video uh, with everybody bustling around before the family's awake. And then we move into breakfast. What are the differences between British and American breakfasts? Um, orange juice, we were so happy to see that in season four. They made a big deal about that, very American. And then, uh, moving into the day, all the daytime activities of the family, the, the Crowley family, the Grantham um, people, and then into, uh, we actually have another section, the people who are still working in midday in the house, the, the valet, the ladies maid, they're indoors as in contrast to the family who are outdoors and their leisure activities. And then up into tea time, into evening, and we end with those gorgeous, gorgeous evening dresses. Dave Roselle thought the costumes of Downton Abbey might be a good fit for winter tour. First, the most popular exhibition we've ever had was in 2007, 2008, the fashion in film. That was with Cosprop, one of the leading theatrical rental companies in the world. So we went back to Cosprop and we asked them if it was possible to do Downton Abbey. In fact, they were the ones who had the majority of the Downton Abbey costumes. The costumes of Downton Abbey fits into the Wintertour story. Wintertour was a thriving country estate from, the 18, from 1839 right through to 1969 when Henry Francis DuPont, uh, who was the founder of the museum, died. Um, the heyday of Wintertour was the 19-teens, 20s, and 30s, right up to World War II. Downton Abbey was not my idea. That was the idea of our director, David Roselle. He is a, a huge fan of Downton Abbey. And he asked his head of the museum, Tom Savage, if Tom thought we might be able to do a Costumes of Downton Abbey exhibition. Well, he asked Tom because Tom knows everybody. And Tom took a series of two phone calls before he reached Jul Julian Fellows. And within several weeks, contracts were signed, dinners were taken, dress drinks were clinked, and we got the exhibition. We end the exhibit with what we think is the biggest wow, and those are the dynamic older ladies who really make the show. Who's everybody's favorite character? Violet. Uh, the uh, interchange between Violet and Martha and Isabel, and the way their costumes express their different personalities is fascinating. And that is how we end the show with that very, I think what makes really I think Downton Abbey so popular is the incredible older ladies on that show.